Hey everyone, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today, let's get into a video all about making these gorgeous wraps for the soap. Lots of people have asked me how to do them. They're really easy. So let's go over to my computer. We'll log into Canva and then we will start the process. So I use Canva for this. You can use the free account or you can use the paid. I do have the paid account, uh, but you can do lots with the free account. So let's go over there and I'll show you exactly how to make these gorgeous, gorgeous ones. So let's get started on making these beautiful soap wraps. So they're really, really easy. So first we're going to start with a customized sign. So we're in Canva, we've already logged in. And then what we're going to do is just go into here. Now you can do most of these things if you have a free account. You don't need to have um, an account like I have, like I do have a pro account. Um, and it's about $17 a month, but you don't need to have that. So we're just going to go here into custom size and I'm in Australia, so we're going to say centimeters. So up here it will come as pixels. We'll just change that to centimeters. If you're in the US um, or another uh, country that uses inches, just use inches. So for today's exercise, we're going to put this in, like I said, in centimeters. So generally most bars of soap, you can use an A5 and that's on a landscape um, size because remember we want to wrap it right around the edge of the soap. So make sure you're doing it landscape. So here what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing 21 centimeters for the width and the height is going to be 14 centimeters and that's approximately an A5 size. You can cut it down, you can make it smaller or bigger. If you've got guest soaps then make them an A6 size. So we're just going to press create and then this is going to give us the format that we want. Now, most of the backgrounds, um, you know, you know, we're going to obviously choose the background, but, you know, here on the side, as you can see here, it will give you all these different ideas, but we really don't want that because we're just going to make a soap. So now we've got here and now we want to put our pattern in. So all we're going to do is go over here to elements and we'll press elements. And in Elements, what it's going to do is give you lots of different ones. And you can see the ones that I've recently used. So now in the top bar here, we're just going to type in what we want. So we'll pretend, for instance, we're going to write floral patterns. So, um, and this will give you a pattern. So if you're looking for a floral pattern, we'll push Enter. And these are all the ones it's going to give us. So you can choose whichever one you want. And of course, we can alter this. We can change it totally so don't think you're stuck to this design you're not so for instance you're just going to put your hand on it um, you know hold one of the keys down hold the uh, left side down on your uh, mouse pad and then you are just going to slide it in and let go so you can see here I've got this blue pattern and if you click on it then up here it says transparency. Now this will help you to make it lighter. So if you can see, you can get a real lighter one or a bolder one. So I usually lighten mine to around 70 or 71. Around that is really, really good. So now, like I said, we've got our pattern. Um, and now we, that, you know, that's the basis of the pattern. But of course, now we want the instructions on the front, which is the label telling us what it is, um, you know, the weights of it and so on. So let's go down and we will just see if there's a few more patterns because although it's kind of cute, it's a little boring, isn't it? And, you know, just search for whatever you want. I mean, there is so many um, that you can slide in. So just get rid of that one. So we will just go back and we'll do this one. Everyone knows I absolutely adore the color pink. So let's pop it in. And you know, you can go lighter or darker, but remember if you go too light, sometimes it's too light on the printer. But anyway, like I said, so we've got this now. Now what we want to do is we want to actually create the centerpiece here. So I'll show you how to do that. And that means you don't have to stick a sticky label on later. The label will already be on the front of it. So once again, we're in elements. So if you can see here elements, so we'll just push the cross to get rid of that. And in elements, they also have like shapes. So we're just going to go and choose a square shape. So it's going to put it on. I always keep it in white. It costs you less in printing if things are white. The same as you'll see my pattern has a white background and it's less in printing. 
So now you can see this line in the middle. This means it's centre to the page and we want it centre. And remember this bit here is kind of going to be your fold over bit and the bottom will be your fold over bit. So I usually keep it to about here. Measure your soap just to see um, and we'll all widen it. Now can you see when I widen that and hold it down, um, it gives you that little black space and it will tell you here that it's 4.5 to um, 4.8 to 5 point whatever so it's going to tell you the centimeters um, or you know the widths whatever you choose so it will actually let you know so like I said we've got this bit here let's pop that here and I'm going to get another one of those we'll go back to shapes and we'll print another one and we'll once again we'll make this white and I'll show you why so we can put this under the bottom make this bit here a little smaller and you want them to be, you know, you want them to be matching. And you can see that they are. So the bottom bit here is usually where I would put your website and logo and things like that. So now for here, we're going to pretend this is mine because um, obviously I already have my own logo saved and everything else. So we're just going to pretend that this is going to be something we're already going to make. So we need to go and get our logo first of all and then choose something else okay so anyway let's go into that so usually you would upload your logo um, and if you don't know how you just go on to here push uploads then upload a file and this file can be from your website uh, but I'm not going to because I've already saved these in Canva. So once you upload them, they'll just be in your uploads and save. And you can see these are all my own images here um, that obviously that I use. So I'm going to go down and find where I put the logo. You can actually delete them, but I haven't deleted them because I often make myself books and things like that. Um, and then, of course, you know, I need these pictures to put in my magazines that I make, which I give away sometimes. So, and you, look, there are the things you can do. You can do anything on here. I mean, you can make your own business cards on here. You can make your own logos. I mean, there's so many things. So if you don't have a logo, you can actually make one on Canva. I uh, Maybe I'll bring out another video how to do that one later on. But like I said, today is all for the wraps. <laughs> and I can't remember where I actually put my own logo, but I know it is saved in here. So we will just go and find it and you'll see other logos of other people I work with sometimes um, because then I actually use this to create things to put back on my website. So now here is my logo here. So we're just going to pretend obviously, you know, you wouldn't have a square. You just make it look nice, fit it in. So we'll pretend this is going to be your logo. Now let's just, we're going to make this bigger so we can see the little bit that we're working on here. So now we've got our logo and, you know, once again, center it, so just pull it in the center. You can see this line was the center and now we want to put in a text. So let's just push text and this is going to be telling us exactly what it is. So I usually use this one. Make sure you use one that's easy to read. Um, and I usually choose one called Alice, but DM Sands here is very good as well. Um, so we'll use this DM Sands just for now. So we'll pretend, you know, like I said, this is a soap. So we're just going to write up the top, write what it is. So if you're in the US, you would write American soap or made in the USA, whichever you want to do. So we'll just say, for instance, made in America. Whatever country you're in, just write, you know, made in whatever country. It will slide this up to the top. People really like knowing where it's made. Um, and just, you know, usually I use like 9 or 10 because remember this is going to be bigger than this. You don't want this writing to be too crazy. Um, so usually I write something like this, made in America, and we'll put this in here. And then um, I usually write handmade soap. Or you can just write soap, whatever you want. Um, it's, you know, it's up to you what you want to write in it. So let's just, we'll go back to the star and I'll make this really easy. So um, like I said, we're going just to write um, hand poured soap. You can write whatever you want. I mean, you know, um, it doesn't really matter. So you can see, we'll just say that we're going to write soap, but you know, usually I would write made in Australia or something like that on the top. So now we've got the hand poured soap up here so people know what it is. 
and now at the bottom we just want to add something a little bit here just to say what it is so usually if you've got your logo or something like that um, and look I'll show you actually how to do a ribbon on it I usually put ribbons on mine and then you know when you go to a fancy store it has a line that goes across um, it's really easy as well back to elements and back to um, here so we're just going to choose the square you can make your square really small um, just like this and usually you want you know so we're going to just choose this one because we want the line to be the same as the logo color and I've already saved it because it's my logo color and we're going to just put it here now position means making it go to the back because we don't want the ribbon to sit on the top so we'll just push that and you can see now it's behind everything and it looks much better doesn't it so now like I said we've got that let's just add in the next bit that we're going to do so we're going to go back up here keep all your text the same it looks much neater much nicer because we've used this one we will use this again and um, what do we use here so we use nine so we'll make this one here be nine as well and now this one you know is going to be we just want to know you know what is the weight of this so we'll just say 130 grams for instance um, you know just write whatever you want but we'll pretend this one's 130 grams when you're doing um, things like the weights they need to be in the direct center with nothing in its way um, and in Australia that's just the way it has to be um, that's just a part of our regulations that the 130 grams or whatever it's going to be needs to be in the center very clear for somebody to be able to see and it needs to be at least um, a number six to eight in your font size you can see here your font size to so try and keep them always to eight or more it's easy for people to read so now of course you want to know what this is called so we'll just pretend we're going to call this floral so we want to write a name in just to make it look a bit fancy so choose um, you know if you have a particular font that you use so we'll pretend we're going to use this font if you're going to use this one we want to add something else in so let me just get out of this no we don't want to change all so we're just going to leave this for a minute and say no it will try and change it we'll just pretend it's going to change it it will give you ways to change everything so now like i said we have got this in here we know this is exactly what we want it's looking fantastic and the easy way to is you can click on this and if you push Control c it will copy it and then push Control v and it will give you a second one so if you can see how I just easily did that go over the top and we'll pretend like I said we're going to call this floral now you might decide you're going to change it you might want this to be in Brittany um, so I've just changed the font so you can see up here you just click on whatever font you want um, and you can choose any of these like it doesn't matter what you choose um, we'll choose this one for instance and then of course I usually make this bold you know so we're just going to change the font size and if this was the name of it look how cute that looks so literally all that's what you need to do and in this little box here you can choose to write um, manufactured by and your details and so on a little bit of blurb about the soap if you want to keep the ingredients on here you can put that in here I personally don't all the ingredients are on the back of my soap and I just make a sticker and put that sticker on the back but pretend we're going to make um, this as a part of the soap so we're just going to pretend that we're going to do some writing in here once again go to this one just push Control c Control v you're just going to copy it so you don't have to do any other work and then we will just go as far as the block and we can make this number eight because you don't want this one too big so um, if we're going to write ingredients so we'll just write you know ingredients so most of us would have say olive oil um, and sodium hydroxide I mean write in all of the you know details that you need we'll just say um, mica water and you get the hint so that we'll just pretend okay now what I usually do with mine as well is if you go up to here 
um, sorry, up to here, we want to make sure that the writing is all going down that side. It looks neater. When you just centre the writing, it kind of can look a bit messy. So this looks nice. So we'll pretend, okay, we've got our ingredients in here. Now, next, you know, you need to put warnings on things as well. And what I usually do is I usually write things like if redness. So we'll just say here, if redness or irritation, occurs, please discontinue use and rinse with clean water. And the reason I'm saying, now I've, you probably noticed here that I'm saying a solution. So it's no good just telling them, well, don't use it anymore. They might have had a red sore skin. So you want to be able to say, okay, your skin sore, you know, you can rinse it off. So just give them a solution as well. But do look at your T's and C's, um, you know, with your registration and the country. We're just going to make this wider just for today's episode so I can show you, you know. Um, but like I said, you need to, we need to test this to make sure this is right. Now that I've moved it, we'll just, we're just going to centre this again just so that I'm teaching you the right way. And, you know, just you do all you're going to do, you can see, like, I'm just moving everything. So I do spend quite a bit of time making sure this looks good. Um, and we'll just, we're going to lower that to seven. Um, because remember, this is not going to, this is going to look bigger than what it is too. But, you know, you do need to test all of these um, as well, don't we? So now we're going to write that. So already we do have um, our warnings and things like that. And so if it comes to the warnings, let me just go back here. Um, we'll just go in here. So I usually write warning. Because you've got to remember that everyone has a different skin type as well. So you can see here really clearly. And usually this bit here I would bold in red. Um, and then at the bottom, you know, you need to write it's manufactured by you and so on. So um, fill in all of those details. Obviously, you'd write all the ingredients I'm just showing you on here. And then, um, and then at this little bit here at the bottom, I usually write on it manufactured by, put your website and your name. And it's really, really clear. You can also get the little warning symbols um, and they will be in here. So if we go back to elements... And we're just going to write in here, warning. And you can see already they come up. So you could literally just bring this one here. Obviously, we're not going to put it that big on the soap. Make it really, really little. And then, you know, that warning can go with your warning label. And you can put something like that on it and continue. But like I said, I usually keep the pretty bit here for the centre and then all of the um, things that need to be on it are at the back. But obviously at the front you need to have how many grams it is, what it is, so it's a hand poured soap and obviously put the name of it so people can see because if you're selling wholesale it will be in the shop exactly as you see it. So we'll pretend we're finished and so now we'll just make this smaller again and doesn't it look cute like it looks really pretty and then you can wrap up your soap nice and easy and then all we're going to do once we've done this is up here we're just going to push the button that says share so let me push the share button and down here we are going to write um, download. So we'll pretend we're going to download it because we want to save it. Save it as a PNG. That way you could print this in Vistaprint. You could print it through your $30 printer. I mean, you don't need an expensive printer and that's it. So then just download and save it to your file. So we'll just say download and you can see it's downloading. And then just go onto this side here because it's going to show you a little tab. So you just click on the tab and then here it is here. And I'm just going to push this button, save as. And then it will go into a file. So this is one of my other files. So here you would just write, you know, floral and save. But I won't save it because obviously I'm not going to save this one. And that's it. And then after this, all we're going to do is go over to... Um, our Cricut machine, if you have a Cricut machine, you're going to pop this image into it, write the right size and print it out. If you don't have a Cricut machine, you can print this on your normal printer. 
it's just not as easy because the normal printer won't give you exact measurements. Whereas if we bring this one back into um, Canva, it will definitely show us. So actually, how about I save it just so that um, I can actually show you how to do it. So we'll just say download. Um, and I'll show you how to do this in Cricut Y where it got the machine open. So here we are, we're open in here. It's nice and easy. So like I said, once again, as we said before, save us. And where have I got this candle tin? So I'm just going to write floral and we'll write test. So I know this is a test for everybody. So we'll say save. Now I'm going to go over to Cricut. My Cricut symbol is at the bottom. You can probably see it here at the bottom of the screen. And this is one that I've done. So let me just get out of this screen for a minute. And we will just get out of that one here. And so we're just going to say new. We'll make a new um, one because we want to make something new. So now you just push upload on the side here. And then you go into upload image. And so then we're going to browse because this will be on my computer. I'm browsing on the computer. And so remember we uh, saved it in my 100 candles. But obviously you would save it in the right thing. I just did it in here. To show everyone. Click on the image and push open and you'll get really good at this honestly you will so just push complex complex means you want this pattern to be as bright as it is if you choose any of these um, so I'll show you they won't look as good um, this just means it's not as bright and then simple means it will show not much at all um, so you know but we're going to do complex and it will be exactly as we've made it now let's just go into here. So apply and continue and we're not going to do anything. If you wanted to um, see this little cross, if I clicked on this, it would delete some of the background. So don't delete anything because we want this to stay the same. Apply and continue. And then we want to print it. So just click on this until the green outline comes on. And then we'll just say upload because we want to upload it to Cricut. So already it's on the computer. This is just in the Cricut design space. So now we're going to click on the image that we chose so that we can put it into Cricut. We'll say add to canvas and this is the design space um, which is basically just your, your main platform that you use on Cricut. So now you can see it's in here, it's popped it in here. And the reason this little yellow symbol is showing is because this is too big to fit on a mat. It can only be 23 um, centimetres wide to fit on a mat. And see this thing here, how it's a lock? This is unlocked, which means if I change anything, it will, um, it will play around with the numbers. So always make sure you lock this bit here. Now we're going to go into it. So remember what we said, it's going to be in centimetres and my design space is in centimetres because that's how I've already done it. So we know that we want um, the across bit here to be 21. So we'll type in 21, enter. And there you can see that is exactly perfect. So now all we would do is go here to make it. And it's sitting here ready to go. We'll push continue send to printer so you obviously you would have your printer all organized Un undo this green bit because otherwise it will leave big black marks because that's for specialized printing we're going to just do one and now it's trying to connect to my printer and now we would press print but I'm not going to print it because I don't want to print it but and that's it it will literally print out and your job is done and they're looking gorgeous and of course, I know this video has made this look super long, but I promise you, it is not that long. It just, um, you know, showing the process takes longer. But honestly, I do hundreds of these every week. Um, so it's really not hard. And if you don't want to use the Cricut and you want more of a professional uh, paper, most of mine, um, I do now get printed at Vistaprint. So I make them just like I've shown you. Then I go over to Vistaprint and choose what's called a flyer. So flyer is a little bit of a wax proof paper on Vistaprint, but it's easy to fold your soap and it looks beautiful. And then we're done. You just fold it and use some sticky tape to stick it all together and make it look gorgeous or some double sided tape, whatever you prefer. So I hope today's video has given you a really good idea on how to make an easy soap label. It's not hard. I know when you're using programs, this might feel, 
you know, a little bit tricky. But once you get used to this, I promise you, you'll be able to make really beautiful wraps and you can do them pretty fast. But if you just design it, like I said, and then go to Vistaprint and get them to print 100, you can get it as low as $0.09 cents, um, a piece, which it cost me about, I've worked out to be 11 to $0.13 cents per one. And that's when um, um, I'm using plain paper at home and with the ink. So, but with Vistaprint, it's about nine cents if you're buying in bulk. So, um, yeah, so that's sort of your costing. And I will tell you, everybody, since I started wrapping my soap, I'm really, you know, upping my game in my design on products. I have sold so many. I've gone from selling, you know, one or two hundred dollars a month to close to five thousand dollars a month. So that is a huge difference in sales. So, you know products and the design is so important it really is um, to get you across the line anyway i hope this has helped make sure you give me a massive thumbs up and um, come over and join our facebook page if you like and of course we are over on patreon and i'll show all of you what i'm up to over there anyway have an amazing day make sure you're kind to somebody today bye